Right, okay. Fan formula this week from I of Alex G, 1977. That's myself, the man behind the view. Um, <laughs> there's going to be a little bit of a different change when it comes to wardrobe in honour and tribute of the very great Mr. Eddie Jordan. Well, I thought I'd start off with the, um, well, as close as I could find for a shirt, the Jordan team colour. Um, obviously, you know, the, the bright bumblebee yellow. Well, it's not quite there, but there we go. Right, on with the questions. So, the team battles. Okay, well, the colour that I am wearing at the moment represents the yellow part. Well, the gold part, specifically, of one team. Lotus. Um, obviously, when you think about it, I've got my smartphone, which is black. So, there we go. Lotus, which is the team battle that I am really, really interested this season about. Obviously, we have Kimi Raikkonen coming back from a two-year hiatus with the WRC and also ran in the Nationwide Truck Series over in the States. Did quite well, from what I understand. So, it'll be interesting to see how he re-adapts, um, because he's nearly been, along, uh, nearly been away as long as Michael Schumacher. So, um, but obviously we've got Romain Grosjean returning to the Enstone based team that he drove for when it was Renault in 2009. So this team battle is one that um, I'm interested in seeing. Obviously with Romain, he has shown how dominant he was last season. So given a chance for the Enstone based squad, we could see a surprise that the Flying Finn, the Iceman, could be under major pressure. So... First shirt down, three more to go, and it's all in tribute of Mr. Eddie Jordan. Right, here we go, Mr. Jordan. It's shirt number two for question number two. Um, right, obviously, yeah, we saw DRS introduced at the same time with Kurz. Um, in 2011. Um, I'm not going to make my feelings known about Kurz because I am in agreement with a lot of people with regards to it being a bit too artificial. However, yes it does add a bit of spice to the racing um, yeah, to an extent where it's... Uh, let's put it into context here, Abu Dhabi last year. Um, perfect example, Jensen fighting against Mark Webber for third place. Um, and there was a particular moment, I think it was halfway or two thirds of the way through the race, that we saw Mark was uh, behind Jensen, was catching him quite quickly, and then used the DRS to his direct advantage in the first DRS zone at the Abu Dhabi circuit. Slingshots straight past Jensen. Um, but then on the next one, Jensen comes straight back at Mark and overtakes him. So <clears throat> I think with DRS and Kurz, yes, the drivers have got experience of it obviously there are drivers who are going to have to adapt namely Charles Pique, um Jean-Éric Verne um, I think well Romain's going to have to um, get himself acquainted with DRS um, so obviously there are going to be people who are at a disadvantage um, but yes the majority of the field will um, it will play into the racing it will uh, have a, a, a more of a tactical aspect obviously with regards to char you know the, the charging and everything like that and obviously the DRS zones whether the teams are able to expand dimensionally the letterbox slots at the top of the rear wings and whether we're going to see anything else that's going to come into play with regards to these systems uh, whether we're going to find that the DRSs are going to be blown on by the exhaust if the exhaust positioning is through the regulation. So that could be possibly another way for the teams to get better, um, a better advantage with regards to DRS. Um, so we'll just have to see how it all progresses and whether the teams are going to make adaptions to the relevant systems. So, enough of me and my blue shirt for question two. There'll be one coming up for question three. And yes, it's jazzier than this one. Right, question number three. Even jazzier this time. Look, Eddie, look, it's pink. It's even brighter than DC's shirt. Well, it depends on which one like, you see it. Um, okay, which circuit do I think is not going to go ahead? Well, um, 
I will be honest, I've got a contact on Twitter. I'm not going to mention who that is. But she informs me that progress with the Circuit of the Americas in Texas is going well. So it looks like that's going to be a dead cert. Um, obviously, I think we're going to see a bit of an India situation there. It will be completed just in time. But I'm looking forward to seeing how it's going to shape up things for the 2012 season. I think really it, sh it needs to go ahead. It should go ahead. Um, F1 has been out of favour with um, the US for a number of years and I think it's about time that the teams, the FIA, got back to the st got back stateside and did the business. Bahrain, uh, there's still political out uh, unrest out there and I feel really, really concerned about um, the teams, the drivers, the personnel involved not just through the teams, but also the FIA and the broadcasting teams, as uh, the broadcasting people out there, including uh, Jake Humphrey, Eddie Jordan, DC on BBC, and obviously the guys like Brundle Crofty, um, and Davidson, Simon Lazenby, and Georgie Thompson, and Rachel Brooks, and Natalie Pinkham um, for Sky Sports. So I, I, I think Bahrain's not going to go ahead again. Bernie said for the last two years it's going to go ahead and it's fallen flat on its face. Um, so obviously I think Bernie could end up with egg on his face yet again for the second year in succession. But I feel that Bahrain, sh uh, I doubt if that's going to go ahead because I just think really the teams are saying yes we'll go if it's safe or if you know if everything's okay. But I've got a feeling that there's going to be a last minute situation like we found last year. So in all honesty... Um, I don't think it's going to go ahead at Bahrain, but I definitely want to see the Americas, uh, the circuit of the Americas go ahead. So that's my view on that. So for the bonus question, there will be a fourth shirt, ladies and gentlemen. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Look, it's shirt number four for the bonus question. Sorry, I got a bit too excited <laughs> I don't think the Irish accent came out right there, but, um, well, I, this is going to be the shortest answer I think I've ever submitted. Jensen Button, for the driver's title, and McLaren, Vodafone McLaren Mercedes for the constructors. The reasons, uh, Jensen, he has really shown that he has got the measure of his teammate, Lewis Hamilton. I will be honest, Lewis, you need to get your act together for 2012. Um, it's good to see that you're back on the right track. You know, you're refocused, refreshed, revitalised. Um, McLaren, I really want to see them win the title for the constructors because I think at the end of the day, if the, the MP427 is as effective as it is sleek and seductive in the way that it just looks, it, it I mean, every, every other car that's got a step nose, there are some nice looking cars with step noses, but then McLaren have just done the right thing um, with, the, the, with the regulations for the noses so we'll wait and see especially in the mid-season so that is really my um, that's my take on uh, who I want to see win this season and I'm looking forward to it kicking off in Melbourne in just over four weeks time guys oh, so excited, just can't wait but there we go and that's it with the end of the jazzy shirts as well so thank you for tuning in